Hello guys, my name is Rafael Papa and I'm working with Andrew Steinberg. We're going to talk about DTN networks. So this is our outline from this survey. So what is the DTN is? DTN is a delayed tolerant network. It's a specific type of network where we cannot guarantee connectivity between two end to end points. So what are the main challenges we have? So we have for this network high delays, scalability, extremely large end-to-end -end delays, and there's no guarantee of reliable delivery. So the problem. The problem in DTN is, is how to route a packet from one node to another if the network cannot guarantee connectivity between end-to-end -end points. So how can we do that? So the main strategy to do that, actually we have two strategies to do that. We have floating strategy and we have the store and forward stat strategy. Uh, the floating strategy consists on spreading multiple copies of messages over the network. And the store and forward strategy stores the message locally until the next opportunity to transfer the information. So the second approach, the store and forward strategy, it doesn't replicate the message. So we don't have duplicated messages on the network. So let's talk about a, uh, a little bit more about DTN routing. So in DTN routing, we have some examples of like people are studying for a while. So we have this epidemic routing. This is a routing protocol that spreads copies of the messages along the network. And we can see the way how it works on the picture on the right side. So uh, if a source node wants to send a message to a destination node, it will rely on node's mobility to do that. If we, we look at the, mess, the, the picture, we have the C2 needs to reach C3 to transfer the message on the second option below. But this is a very efficient rate. This is a very efficient protocol. He has a, a very high delivery rate. But he, we believe that also generate a lot of overhead because of that. And later, we discovered this new paper. This new paper uh, is using broadcast and acknowledgments, also with Markov chain to keep track of the message of the internet. So they have a very good approach to reduce this amount of overhead. They are keeping track of these messages. So the authors on this paper, they, they implement a Markov chain and they keep track of all the messages and broadcasts that are delivering on this on this, on this protocol. So, floating routing has um, some major problems. Um, one problem is based on its mechanism that how it runs, it could cause some serious flooding in the network, which causes overhead. So there is a way we can improve upon that, which is through spray and wait. So spray and wait is another type of routing in DTN, and it has two stages. The spray phase, which sends a number of copies of the message to a certain amount of nodes in the area, and then it goes into a waiting period, which allows the receiver nodes in the network to notify the transmitter that it was the intended receiver. And basically, author showed from results that the overhead is improved significantly from epidemic routing. Now, we can take the extended spray and wait and look into how we can improve scalability. Now, the authors here um, implemented a protocol with a buffer management as the, as the extension. And what they did was they considered two scenarios. Simply, if the message can fit in the buffer queue, then it will be added. However, if the message is too big, then the smallest value from, what, from the sprays phase of previous messages is dropped. However, if there are multiple messages with the same smallest value, so more than one, then current, the current biggest value will be dropped. Basically, what we see in the results is an improvement in scalability and, of course, delay in delivery rate. And now there's another kind of routing protocol we have besides spray and wait that we can improve um, broadcasting with. Um, we can also use probability. So basically, this method is called probabilistic routing protocol using history of encounter and trans transitivity. In short, profet. The idea of this routing protocol simply keeps track of nodes meeting other nodes and their chances of meeting again. And there are three types of updates that these nodes will go through in the network. 
The first one is, if node A does not meet node B within a certain time, then the first probability will be applied. If node A meets node B within a certain time frame, then we will use the second update for the probability. Now, the third one, if node A meets node B and node B meets node C, then we can simply use the transitive, transitivity property to say that node A will meet node B based on the third formula. So the idea is what we can see is probability has a lot of power to allow us to determine if we can transmit or not. And we can take both that and evolve it even more by considering congestion levels in the network. So what they did was, in this work, the authors set a threshold that would determine if a package should be forwarded or not based on the congestion level in the network. So simply, if the packet that was sent would exceed the congestion level, it would be dropped. Otherwise, it would get sent. And overall, what results would show from this work is the delivery rate would significantly improve, go up, and delay would go down. Yeah, so now we have a combination of the two previous works that we just discussed. This work literally is a combination of spray and wait and profit. The authors are using both to address the main drawback of epidemic routing, that is the number of message copies on the network. So we can see here at the picture that they adjust the level of replication based on the L and replication history of this protocol. So we have these two parameters. We have L and we have this threshold that's the replication history. So the replication history is the probability of a message to be delivered or not. And this is a very good approach because they are they are claimed they are solving the most problem of the epidemic routing. And now we have some applications and interesting applications. We can start talking about one of good applications for this kind of networks are DTN networks are the space networks. So uh, we need to explain before we, we start to talk about the CCODR algorithm, we need to talk about this EAODR routing algorithm. That's one that they are based on. So these guys, this EAODR algorithm, they generates a path between the source and destination nodes based on their earliest contact. So they are using contact to do that. So as it computes each possible path, it will generate a lot of overhead and congestion problems. So the authors from this work, they claim they are solving these congestion problems to, re to reduce the, pack the packet loss ratio. They are using a method to do that. So there's another application for DPN. They can be deployed in rough environments such as space we saw, but they can also be deployed underwater. Um, one of the challenges in underwater is predicting mobility patterns because, you know, currents can change. So the authors here implemented a DTN network that uses machine learning to help predict these underwater patterns, and they called it Q-learning. Um, the routing protocol um, simply has two parts. Um, basically, it's a predictor and a forwarder. The predictor will use mean squared to help predict if two nodes will meet again based on previous uh, mobility patterns. And then if the predictor says they will, the forwarder will kind of make sure that the connection is going to be valid because in the um, underwater environment, it could be very challenging to get a connection. So overall, what they showed is implementing this Q-learning outperforms epidemic spray and weight in PROFET because PROFET, while it is using probability, um, sometimes the probability can be off, off, and we kind of want to advance that probability a bit. And epidemic and spray and weight would just cause a lot of congestion and flooding in the network that would um, result in very high delays. Um, so we kind of created a table here to compare all the works we read. So there are multiple comps you see here. Um, FL stands for flooding. SF is store and forward. DR is delivery rate. LA is latency, or known as delay. SC is scalability, RA is resource allocation, and sim tool is just short for simulation tool. So we kind of wanted to note what they all had in common, what we see here. Um, you'll notice that all the delivery rates were high. Um, basically, the authors in their own papers that they wrote said that their protocol was higher than the others, which it was. Um, however, we can't really compare our works all together because, you know, some of the simulation tools, as you can see here, are different with different parameter setting. So we kind of need a more fair experiment to make um, 
uh, suggestions of which one would be actually high, low, and medium or average. But um, what we do notice is um, we can see some open research issues from this. So if we take a look at um, scalability, you'll notice is that there's a lot of there's a couple of X's and a lot of non-applicable. Um, so what we notice in some of the protocols is the routing that they use. A lot of them use unicast routing, which we can tell. Or and what we want to see what we can improve upon is using multicast because if we can improve scalability, we can improve delivery rate. But one of the challenges is um, uh, can, can, uh, keeping track of overhead. Okay, thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoy. So until your next semester, okay, bye.